Hello, my gorgeous human friends. Welcome back to another episode of the No Food Rules News. This is where each week we sit down, chit chat, very casual, and go through a handful of stories that I've seen in the past week, whether it's new research that comes out, pop culture articles, anything, any headlines that I think like we've got to talk about this that are related to food, nutrition, dieting, body image, all of the things. And like I said, we chat about them. I give my opinion as a registered dietitian. If you are new, hi, I'm Colleen. I'm a non-diet registered dietitian that is going to help you understand fact from fiction when it comes to all of the headlines. So if you are new, welcome. I hope you love this episode. They're meant to be very casual. Sit down, grab a snack. Maybe you are I've been getting into watching YouTube videos as I'm cooking dinner. I think it's just such a nice way to relax. I feel like everyone has their own like times of day. For me, it's when I am or like when it just feels soothing to just kind of like immerse yourself in content. For me, it is when I'm cooking dinner and then also when I'm putting my makeup on in the morning. I just love it. So anywho, that's what we are going to do here. They come out every single what is it? Thursday. And we chit chat. Okay. So let's go ahead and just get on into our stories that we have today. We have quite a few stories, a couple body image ones. We have a clickbaity news story that's just a headline. And I, I can't believe they even actually made this into the article that it was, but it was everywhere. So we need to talk about it. Um, we have a little, a really sad story about a health influencer. I feel like we have had these stories about influencers so often lately where they're just sad stories. We'll get to it. Um, and we've got some TikTok news that we will wrap up on. It's a really fun one. So we've got a lot of interesting things to chat about today. And it's funny because they're all kind of intertwined. Um, so yeah, uh, let's just, let's dive in. So the first story that we have to talk about today is the title says 15 pictures that define the new era of Victoria's secret. So the article says for decades, Victoria's secret championed a singular ideal of beauty. One that's primarily white cisgender, thin, young, and able-bodied. Now that's changing. The lingerie giant is undergoing a significant rebrand, moving away from the narrow view of beauty to one that strives toward true inclusivity. Based on what women told us, talking to women over the last year and a half, even more to understand where we had gone off track as a brand. Um, The answers we got back had to do with representing a diverse way of thinking and relating to women and showing more types of women so that all types of women, how many times can they say types of women, (laughs) Um, can see themselves in the brand. I think uh, the challenge for us is actually delivering on it. By making this very public statement, we are committed to the transformation and we're committed to showing up for women as we have been meaning to do. So essentially, moral of this news article was that they came out with uh, this article had 15 pictures of kind of like the new face, if you will, of Victoria's Secret. And I saw this headline and I got super excited about it. Like, that's amazing. I mean, I remember for a lot of us, especially like us millennial and older women, it was especially like the Victoria's Secret fashion show was something that I always really, it was like watching the freaking Olympics, you guys. Like, can anyone else relate to that? Like, For me, I remember watching, like, ogling over these bodies walking up and down the runway with, like, wearing nothing. And it was, it's just, it, it, like, hurts my heart to think back how much younger Colleen, like, envied those women um, and just strived to do whatever possible to try to look like them. So moral of the story is I think that, like, this is a positive move for Victoria's Secret. However, when I actually got into the article, there was one transgender person and one plus side person. Now, 
that's progress, right? And that is great. But part of me just felt like, is this just checking a box? Like, okay, transgender, check, you know, larger body, check. Um, Not saying that that's what they were doing, but sometimes that's kind of the vibe that I got from it. Um, Again, I think that any strides that we can make in dismantling diet culture and this thin ideal is good. Like I'm not, I don't want this to come across as like bashing it, but sometimes it's, it's sometimes it's, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's hard to know the difference between brands that are truly like understanding of why they're doing something versus kind of like trying to fit the social pressures that brands face to be inclusive these days. So again, while I do think that it was a positive step in the right direction, and as always, guys, these stories are all linked in the description of this video, so you can take a peek at them. Um, But I do think that, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to tell. And the, so the average size of a woman in the U.S. is a size 16. And if we say like that's the average size of a woman, like that's very disproportionate to not only Victoria's Secret, to many of the brands that we see online. I was looking at clothes. I feel like that's something I – I'm always kind of like passively looking at with brands, especially when I do get brands reach reaching out to me. I'm not a fashion influencer, guys. Like, hello, Colleen wears literally the same sweatshirts every single day in different colors. Um, I'm not a fashion influencer. However, for some for some unbeknownst reason, they reach out to me. And that's one of the first things I look at is, are you an inclusive brand? And a lot of the times it is if we go back to that stat that the majority, the, you know, are uh, the average size is a 16, that's not being represented. And even with the transgender and the plus size addition to Victoria's Secret, it's just still a little lopsided, if you know what I mean. Um, so you can take a picture, take, take a look at the pictures yourself. Um, but again, I do think that any strides are good, right? But I don't know. Let me know what you think. Take a peek um, and let me know your thoughts. But I was just kind of left feeling like, oh, I remember I got to the end of the list and I was like, oh, that's it. Like I was expecting more from it. But again, I don't want this to come across as like so critical without acknowledging like, okay, that's a great step in the right direction. (sighs) But it just wasn't didn't do what I was expecting it to do for me as I was reading it. Um anywho. Okay, the next one is the next story, story number 2 is actually Victoria's Secret adjacent, I suppose you could say. So it was funny, not funny, but it was coincidental. Maybe that's the right word. I watched these stories on Instagram. And then it really touched me. And then I saw a article about the story. So the title of story number two says, Khloe Kardashian tells Remy Bader, you are perfection in a supportive post. She says, your soul sparkles. So the article says, after Bader 28, guys, if you don't follow Remy Bader on Instagram or TikTok, I highly, highly would recommend. Girl's hilarious. Um, And she's very inspirational and just motivational. She's just just got the good vibes going on. Um, But she shared an emotional video about the body shaming that she has been subjected to on Sunday. Kardashian 39 took to Instagram in support of the fashion influencer. She said, just a little at Remy Bader appreciation post. You are perfection just as you are, exactly as you come. In all phases, you are perfection. Never forget that your soul sparkles. I have goosebumps. Your smile is magic and your heart is pure. Oh my gosh. Like who doesn't want to be told they sparkle? We all sparkle, you guys. But oh, my Lanta. Okay. So that was, let me fill you in. I, like I said, did watch Remy Bader's story because I, I do love following her. And essentially she was talking about 
like the article said, the body shaming that she experienced. And it just, the online world can be such a great place, right? It can also be such a mean, mean place. And I can't imagine what it must be like for Remy to, I mean, she has such a large following, right? And with that also comes the negatives. Um, and so she essentially was talking about how she was kind of like done sharing her health journey and she was kind of setting boundaries like this is for me. I don't owe anyone an explanation of anything that I'm doing. I'm just not going to talk about it anymore. And I say, go girl, set the boundaries, right? I am all for her setting the boundaries with that and being like, you know what, this is, it's kind of like, you, we, we put, I, I talk about this a lot. We put so much on influencers to share every facet of their life where it can get to the point where nothing is private anymore, legitimately even someone's health information. And I personally think that you have the right to set those boundaries and say, I am going to do what I am going to do. Now, she was saying she was really struggling with the body image. As I was watching the stories, I, I... I got this feeling that she was kind of like grappling with something like a decision. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And she, she doesn't have to tell us. Right. And I think that is a good thing. However, I am curious if she got any backlash from that because I feel like when there are these body positive influencers out there. And they then, and I feel like this has happened, I feel like over the past year, this has happened quite a few times, where an influencer has started a health journey in some way, shape, or form. And their body may potentially change as a result of that. Uh, And sometimes I think that if a health influencer who preaches all this body positivity, it's okay to, you know, be in a larger body. And then if they start, you know, doing something that may cause their body to lose weight, people can think like, was that real? Was that body acceptance that you had real if you ended up losing weight? Now, I'm not saying that Remy Bader is going to end up losing weight. She doesn't, she's not going to tell, she doesn't have to tell us. You go girl. Um, but it, I guess this kind of sparked a thought in my mind of what happens when someone who has been in a larger body and has been preaching this acceptance of a larger body then goes on to lose weight. That's what this really sparked. It's honestly not even about, uh, Remy Bader and what she had to say. I just think it's a very interesting concept because I've heard from you guys in this community a lot that like, it's hard to see someone lose a bunch of weight when they were preaching about how it it makes someone question, like I said, was that acceptance even real? And I think that bodies change throughout lives. And someone, if they And I don't want this to come across also as when you start a health journey, whatever that looks like, you're going to lose weight. You might lose weight. You might gain weight. You might maintain weight, right? There's no right or wrong there. But I do think that it can be hard for a lot of people who consume social media to see these influencers if they do end up losing weight. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Like I said, I feel like and again, this isn't, this is just me on a tangent now, not even about the Remy Bader story, but it sparked it of having that happen. Cause I, I, I feel like there's a couple people that come to mind that have, you know, were really with the, and not saying that they're not anymore, but they were in a larger body and then their body, what was the, oh, there was a phrase that said like, I'm growing into a new body or something like that, that people were using. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? When they, 
I grew into a smaller body. Maybe that was it. That This was like a trend for a little while. I want to say it was earlier this year or later last year. Um, but I just think that we, you know what? It's almost like we expect that influencers can't change. Um, and we have this picture of these people on social media in our minds and they're so finite that we, some people can almost get upset at if that idea of someone that we follow on Instagram changes. And I think that's honestly super unfair. Now, if someone's like ethics and morals and something changes, that's a different story. But like our bodies are going to change throughout life and everyone has the right to do what makes them feel their best. Like I said, that could be gaining weight, maintaining weight, losing weight. Um, but I think we all just try to do our best to honor what our bodies need and it's okay to set boundaries and say, I don't have to be transparent about every single thing that I do. It doesn't mean that I'm hiding it or that I'm ashamed of it, but I think that sometimes sharing every aspect of your life can make you make your choices based on what other people expect of you. That's good guys. Okay. So I think that if you are, let's take, for example, the non-diet person, right? Um, and you're like, you can eat the burger, you can eat, you know, whatever. Then you order a salad or you order dressing on the side or something like that. People are then are like, oh, was that the choice that you, you know, are supposed to make? People have these expectations of you when they have a persona of someone in their mind and when you deviate from it, what they expect you to do, it makes them question everything. And I honestly think that's kind of like, an, sometimes we have it like an unhealthy expectation of influencers and the, like, the pressures that we put on them in general. Sometimes I think about that. I typically do order dressing on the side. And it's funny because I was seeing, I was watching a TikTok and there was this other dietitian who does very similar work as me, um, and I'm friendly with them. And they had a TikTok that said something along the lines of like, I see you ordering dressing on the side. Like, that's a very diety thing to do. And I was like, girl, I order dressing on the side sometimes because I don't know if I'm going to like the dressing, right? Sometimes – I want to put it on myself, right? There's nothing wrong with it, putting on the amount that you want. Now, would you feel guilt, stress, or anxiety if it came with dressing on the side? No, that actually happened to me. Um, there was a sandwich and it came with um, a sauce on it. And it was actually when we were in Boston and it had a lobster. And I was like, I don't want the sauce to overpower the lobster because, guys, you girl loves seafood. Um, but... So I asked for the sauce on the side uh, so I could, you know, make sure that it wasn't like overpowering the expensive lobster that I was buying. And it came on the sandwich and I was like, whatever, it's fine. Like not a big deal. I'm not going to freak out about it. That's the difference, you guys, uh, between doing something diety. But sometimes I do think about that. Like, oh, like what if, and this happened a couple times when we were in Boston, what if the waitress follows me and she's like, oh, this girl ordered like dressing on the side. And that, if you truly understand not having food rules, you know, you can order dressing on the side. You can order it on. Neither is right or wrong. The thing is, again, we don't get guilt, stress, or anxiety if it does come with that thing on because it's okay, right? We're flexible, but we also have the ability to ask for what we want and how we want it, what's going to be satisfying to us. Um, but kind of getting back to the Remy Bader of it all is that sometimes the expectations that someone has of you, especially when you have a social media presence, sometimes you start to filter your choices through what other people expect of you and what they want versus what you know is what feels good to you and what is right for you. So round of applause for, I think for Remy Bader for setting that boundary, because if you watch the video that's linked in the article, she, it's, she's so emotional about it and rightfully so, because I mean, I don't know, you don't want to let down the community that you've built, but at the same time, you have to protect yourself. And 
that's the best that we can do. So I just thought it was really good. Watch the TikTok. Um, and like I said, if you're not following Romy Bader, highly recommend. She's fantabulous. And I am all for setting boundaries. Great. Okay. Story number three that we have here. This is the super clickbaity headline article, you guys. It says, morning workouts may be better for weight loss, study finds. So specifically, people who get their exercise in between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. had lower BMIs than those who opted to exercise later in the day. So the article was saying that if you exercise between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m., you will burn more fat. Um, This is... Whenever I see studies like this, I get excited to look into the study more, look into the study design, and figure out, like, how did they come to this conclusion? Is this legit? Are they making showing a causation? Or are they just showing a correlation? Like, really look into the, the legitimacy of the study. Um, and this one said... People who did moderate to vigorous exercise in the morning had lower BMI, um, which the BMI is bananas, you guys. Like, that's not a good marker. We know that. Um, But it is something that is commonly used. Um, Then people who did exercise in midday or in the evening. They also state that this could be due to many factors of the study. So essentially, they say that, like, hey, this is what we found, but it doesn't really prove it. Um, So essentially what I think, there's so many things to think about. So the the study also, or the article also says morning exercisers were also predominantly white and female, had a college degree, never consumed tobacco or alcohol. Um, They were also more likely to work out at the same time every day. Um, So I think that There's so many factors that go into this. I think that it's pretty widely accepted that if you are widely known that if you plan your exercise earlier in the day versus towards the end of the day, it's more likely to probably get skipped towards the end of the day because you're tired. You have so many things going on. Um, Maybe like it's kind of like a domino effect. Like if something runs late earlier in the day, it's more likely to run late. You know, it's going to shift your whole schedule and that might be knocking the workout right off the end of the schedule. So it also considers, again, the people who exercise in the morning uh, had college ed- educated um, college degrees. So there is some privilege to being able to work out between 7 and 9 a.m. A lot of people are at work at that time already. So I do think there's like some flexibility. I work out before 7 a.m. Does that mean my workout doesn't count? No. So there was no actual, what they were showing here, and this is something I explain a lot, was a correlation, not causation. Um, They were correlating that the people who had consistent exercise routines in the morning tended to have lower body mass index. That does not say that, so those are correlations. Those two are happening at the same time. It does not mean that the 7 to 9 a.m. workout time, that two-hour window, was what caused the lower BMI, right? There's so many different things. Is it that someone who exercises earlier in the morning tends to be more, I don't know, organized. They tend to um, set themselves up to have a, you know, better day. They would, you know, reduce stress earlier in the morning. They have less stressful, you know, maybe less stress eating during the day as a result of that. There's so many things to think about with this, but it really showed a correlation, not a causation. And I feel like this also was not groundbreaking. It made it seem, guys, it was everywhere. I literally looked at so many like news outlets and it was on like every single one. And the best time to move is the time that is best for you. Some people are not morning people. Some people, for me, like I, it is not happening after I don't, I don't, I don't enjoy it in the evening. Some people are the opposite. There is no right or wrong, but this also goes to show you do not just read a title of an article because a lot of times in the actual article, they will then go on and talk about like all the limitations of the study case in point. This also happened 
I believe with the article that came out on aspartame, um, essentially it, they said it was like becoming a class carcinogen, but they were like explaining like, Hey, this doesn't mean that it's unsafe to consume, but everyone was like, Oh my gosh, it's going to cause cancer. So just moral of the story. And that's also why I do the no food rules news so that we can kind of catch these things in a timely manner so that you're not like, Oh my gosh, that's like the headline is terrifying me. So hopefully that puts your mind at ease. If you saw that it's a okay for you to exercise at whatever time of day you want. Okay. I do want to give a trigger warning to this next story. It's going to be a brief story. So you can skip ahead to the next one. We're going to talk um, weight loss numbers as well as suicide briefly. Um, this is a really sad story. Story number four says health influencer uh, Adriana Thyssen um, died at 49. Family asks for prayer and compassion. So Brazilian uh, fitness influencer Adriana, who lost 100 pounds in just over a year, um, has died to suicide. She was said to be suicide. Um, she was 49 years old. So this is an in incredibly heartbreaking story. And I feel like since I've been doing the No Food Rules News, consistently we've had stories of health influencers. This I think this is the second, second or third, I want to say second, story that we've had someone pass away. We've talked about hospitalizations of the studies. And this is where, as a registered dietitian myself, it is – well, the idea of healthy, there's so many things to talk about. A, I like to put it this way. In terms of health information and knowing what is healthiest, I brush my teeth every day, right? That does not make me a dentist. Just because someone eats and some has done something doesn't mean they are qualified to give you advice on that. Um and so I do have a lot of worries about social media and the advice that's being given. That doesn't take away from this story being absolutely heartbroken in that aspect. I do think that one thing that I – I was honestly unsure if we should even make this a story, but I think it's important to note that losing weight – we have this idea that it's going to fix our problems, that it's going to make us happier. And that's not always the case right now. I am not totally familiar with this influencer on a personal level by any means. Um, but I think that from the outside looking in, we think that if I lose weight, I'm going to be happier. I'm going to thrive. And that's just not always the case. And I think this is can kind of, show that a little bit. Now, again, I don't like totally know what was going on in her personal life, but moral of the story is you never know what someone is going through. And a smaller body doesn't always mean a happier existence. You can lose weight. And a lot of times, one of the reasons we want to lose weight is because we think it's going to give us those things. But if we never do the work on truly working on our self-compassion and working on ourselves, that's not going to bring us the happiness that we think it will. Um, so I just thought that this was just incredibly heartbreaking and sad. And I also do want to give the suicide hotline for anyone um, who might be needing it. So 988 suicide hotline, very, very, very sad story. Um, Okay, I feel like we got to pick ourselves back up after that story. Uh, last story, story number five here is TikTok's cozy cardio uh, trend is the cure for zero gym motivation. So the article says, think of your coziest Netflix night, romanticized to the brim, candles, your favorite beverage, snacks, and dim lighting, your coziest sweats and blankets, and no one else around. Now bring that same energy, but imagine walking, cycling, or logging minutes on the elliptical. So essentially, this is a TikTok trend that's going around, and it is for this cozy cardio, right? And it's essentially kind of rethinking what exercise and movement looks like. Um, it doesn't have to be, let me, 
I should show you guys what I'm wearing right now. You're going to laugh at me. Um, I, so I, <laughs> I'm going to look like an idiot. These aren't what I'm wearing right now. I got like, I got my, my Aldi socks on right now. I look bananas. Um, this is why I can't. Kelly is not a style influencer, you guys. Um, but it doesn't have to be like putting your walking shoes on, sweating it out, right? It can be, movement can be anything, right? And I I actually really love this take on moving our body and just not making it cozy. And this is actually, you guys, a um, human behavior change tactic that's called temptation bundling. And I've talked about how I do this with my workouts tomorrow. Well, I'm so I'm, I'm filming this on Wednesday, um, so I can get it up earlier in the day on Thursday. And Thursdays are my day where I catch up on the Real Housewives of Orange County. Um, anyone else watch that? I catch up on it every Thursday morning, and I'm excited about it. And it makes me get excited to get up. I go on the elliptical, just lightly kind of move my body, watch TV, and it is so fun for me. And I look forward to it for a variety of reasons. I know that when I typically most days get out, for me, going to the gym, it's a big part social because I work from home. Um, I literally don't go anywhere else. So getting social interaction is huge for me and physically getting out of the house. Um, and so that's kind of like just what I do. And so I have that to look forward to. It's okay to temptation bundle saving a, your favorite podcast for when you go for a walk. Those are like actual behavior change techniques and it can make things more enjoyable. Um, the difference is you want to do the thing in the first place, right? If I were like, I don't want to go to the gym, I don't want to go on the elliptical, don't temptation bundle that, right? But if it's something like, oh, I know getting up and moving my body is going to help me for the rest of the day. Sure, make that more enjoyable. So you want to do it even more. Temptation bundling doesn't really work on things that you are forcing yourself to do necessarily that don't need to be done, right? Um, but I just thought this was so fun. I have a walking pad that I love. Um, and... I just think this is absolutely fun. So rethink movement, guys. Get fuzzy socks, um, a walking pad, uh, a cycle, elliptical, anything like that. Um, but I just thought this was like so fun and honestly refreshing from like all of the workouts that you see on Instagram. You could do like a whole like fall vibe. Like, okay, I would love, I would genuinely love your guys' input on this. So please leave a comment below. What are fall movies? My, I was talking with my husband about this yesterday, and he was like, I want to watch some fall movies. And I was like, Joe, what fall? Like, I genuinely can't think of fall. Hocus Pocus, which I've never seen. Actually, guys, I started it. Hot take. I didn't like it. Um, maybe it's because I didn't like – it's not nostalgic for me. I didn't watch it when I was a kid. Um, Halloween Town, same thing. Didn't watch it when I was a kid. Didn't love it. What are some other like fall? Are there literally any? Like I'm genuinely drawing a blank as to what the heck a fall movie is. Um, so please let me know in the comments. Uh, is Harry Met Sally a fall movie? I think they start off when they start the movie. It's fall and that's just why I think it's a fall movie. But I would love your guys' take on that. Please help a girl out. Um, but just love that love that cozy cardio trend. It doesn't have to be sweating. It doesn't have to be strenuous. It's okay. Love that. Okay, guys. Um, that is it for this week's episode of the No Food Rules News. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to get back to my articles. There we go. I've hit like every other button on my phone besides that. Um, if you like this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe to the channel. These come out every Thursday. And if you would like to learn to how to eat with no food rules step by step, you can always join us in the society, the best community on the internet where you can learn how to truly have a healthy relationship with food, crave a naturally balanced diet, get rid of the food guilt. I will link to that in the description below if you are interested in joining us. Um, but with that, I hope you guys go have a lovely day. Maybe get some cozy uh, cardio going and I will see you. 
I, okay, so after this, today's Wednesday, Thursday, I am going to be spending time editing my everything I ate in Boston video. I'm super excited about that. I'm slightly nervous. It's going to be really, really long. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see, but I'm super, our boss, I can't wait to fill you guys in on everything. It was by far the best food we've had on a trip. Like so good, you guys. I can't wait to share it. Um, so get excited. That should be coming next week. And then we'll be back with another episode of the No Food Rules News next Thursday. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. I need to go grab myself a snack. So I'll talk to you later. See you later.